Hello friends, this is Durga again from <coughs> ITVersity. As part of CCS Spark and Hadoop develop, developer playlist, uh, in this video I will be covering ingest real-time and near real-time streaming data into HDFS using Flume. Uh, it comes under data ingest uh, uh, module and we have already seen what Flume is. Uh, I have explained uh, Flume in detail. Uh, and now we will see how we can actually integrate data into HDFS. That is the prime agenda, but we will start with a very simple uh, um, uh, flu, Flume job and then we will see more uh, advanced Flume jobs. Uh, uh, overall, it, it might take 3-4 videos to cover what it is required uh, to get data into HDFS using Flume. As I have explained earlier, uh, you can go to the certification uh, uh, documentation available online during the exam. You can scroll down and you can see it here. There's a link for Flume and you can click on this and it will take you to a link like this. And you have to scroll down and here you have to choose Flume user guide. And any agent will have a source, channel and sync. Uh, so that is the minimum you need to have. Uh, some agents you can have uh, one source, multiple channels and multiple syncs. So it, uh, I have explained the different architectures as well. You can scroll down and you can see what all different uh, architectures we can have um, using Flume agent. So in this case, it, uh, the source is one, but it has three channels and three things. Like that, uh, there are multiple uh, flows you can configure. Okay. In this case, uh, the source is getting from three multiple things. Anyway, you don't need to explore all these things for the certification. Uh, for certification, the requirement is simple. You just need to uh, uh, be able to integrate data uh, using uh, Flume, that is flow, uh, streaming in real time or near real time into HDFS. So the sync will be HDFS. And the source and channel, it can be different uh, um, uh, it, uh, it, it it can have different uh, uh, what we say uh, different uh, uh, ways of doing it so there are multiple ways you can stream data from different sources and we will see those things um, uh, as we proceed further first we will start with a simple uh, application we will pick it from the documentation itself if you scroll down uh, this is where you can see a simple example. You can submit a Flume job like this and uh, you can uh, define uh, um, a simple example uh, from the documentation itself. And here as, you may, as we, have, uh, we are seeing so far, an agent has to have source, async and channel. And uh, the first, uh, um, uh, the first uh, value what we provide before the first dot is considered as the agent name so in this case our agent name is a1 it has a source it has a sync and it has channel for each of the source sync and channel there is a type so for the source the type is netcat where you can do telnet and you can uh, pass the uh, you can type some data and that data will be uh, saved into uh, or processed by flume in real time uh, we will see uh, how we can use this one and uh, the sync type is logger so it will not be saved anywhere when we actually start the flume job uh, it will start a web server and it will log everything into that web server and then uh, the channels uh, there are different types of ch uh, channels um, and we will be using memory we will get into um, different types of sources, sinks and channels later but uh, in this case, in this example Flume configuration, we have a source, we have a sink and we have a channel. Source is of type netcat, uh, channel is of type memory. So the data will be streamed into the memory from the source and then uh, uh, the sink type is logger. Uh, so Flume will push that to uh, 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 the uh, the Flume web server which will be launched when we actually submit the job using this command. So we will use this one to see um, or to test um, uh, uh, that our Flume uh, job is running and then we will also test that data, uh, data is being processed by Flume and displayed as part of the logging mechanism of the web server. 
that being said you can just copy it here okay and go to your uh, cloudera vm cd go to the home directory and i think i have a directory called demo no i don't have the directory called demo what i will do is i will create a directory called flume here cd flume and i will create a directory called cons ls minus ltr pwd i am getting into the cons directory and here i am giving the name for our configuration file as example.conf and here i just have to paste that okay so you have to be extremely careful with the names the first string for all the parameters is same so the agent name is a1 and then you have source sync and channel uh, the source name is r1 sync name is k1 and channel name is c1 so a1 dot source dot whatever the source name is in this case r1 the type is netcat and it is uh, netcat means it will start a web server it will be running on local host ip address and the port number is 4444 all these parameters are related to source of name r1 if you have multiple sources in the same configuration you can have uh, i think different names here similarly is the case with uh, uh, channels the type is memory and the name is this one so the first string in the attribute name um, uh, after delimiting by dot is the name of the agent the second one is uh, the component of the agent it could be a sources it could be sinks or it could be channels and the third parameter is uh, name of that source or sink or channel uh, uh, which is the component of uh, uh, the flume agent and the last one is the parameter name so that's the format they are using for channel we have uh, three parameters here one is type which is memory capacity 1000 and transaction capacity 100 i am not sure about these two parameters we will see later uh, but for now this is how we can actually uh, uh, define uh, all the parameters related to source sinks and channels and finally you need to integrate uh, 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 the source with the channel and sync uh, with the channel and this is how you can connect so the channel for source is c1 here and the channel for sync is c1 so the data that is being read by source will be passed through channel c1 and uh, then that data will be passed through the sync k1 this is how you can actually bind the source and sync to the channel okay now you have the complete flow you have the uh, properties related to source you have the properties related to channel and you have properties related to sync and also you have properties which can which connect these three once that is done you can save it and come out make sure you know the path and then you have to use flume ng command and uh, you can say either minus c or uh, I think minus uh, minus minus cons either way you can do that let me see here they say minus c for uh, to pass the configuration directory or you also can say minus minus cons either way you can do that before uh, uh, passing that parameter we have to give the name so flu minus ng uh, agent name is either you can give minus n or minus minus name uh, uh, yeah, there are two alternative ways to specify the uh, uh, appropriate parameters for the agent and in this case the agent name should match whatever is there in the configuration file which is a1 here and then i'm the space slash um, backward slash is the linux way of uh, line breaking uh, it is a standard way so if you want to write the command in multiple lines you use that and you should not have any spaces after the backslash and then you can say give the configuration either by using minus c or minus minus conf uh, either way you can do it and uh, our configuration directory is home cloud era flume slash conf and space slash and then uh, you can say conf file or minus s both are same i will be using minus minus cons 
file home cloudera flume conf and example.conf is the configuration file for our uh, agent and uh, that's it those three are the parameters name config uh, directory and config file once that is done you can hit enter and it will launch a web service or web server uh, which will be running on 44444 it's a socket uh, it will launch a server socket which will be running on 44444 port once it is running what you can do is only when it says the server socket is started on this port number you should try this you can say telnet localhost this is the ip address that is uh, binding to and 44444 is the port number and hit enter now whatever you type will be processed by the flume agent by the flume source it will be passed down to the channel and then it will be passed down to the sync um, which is nothing but logger which will display and uh, uh, the typed information over here so i'm typing hello world and hit enter you can see it, it is displayed here you can type anything now how are you doing this is the first flume job which uses netstat for source memory for channel and logger for sync and you can see that information uh, displaying here it is not displaying completely uh, but it is only displaying some portion of it probably you might have to change some parameters to display it completely but uh, this is working uh, so this is how you can start with flume uh, main thing is you need to keep in mind uh, how the naming convention should be uh, the parameters name uh, the parameter names should start with the agent name and then dot and then uh, whether it is a source related parameter or sync related para parameter or channel related parameter and then you have to give the names in, in uh, once the names are given um, and then you can define different properties of uh, uh, of those parameters now you can go to the documentation and you can explore uh, different types of sources so what you can do is you, you can search for sources here you can uh, so under configuration so if you scroll down like this under configuration you have flume sources it supports euro source it supports drift source it supports exec source it supports gm source gms source it supports twitter kafka etc most likely in the uh, certification exam as they are emphasizing on syncing into hdfs they might give the code snippet which actually reads the data from some source but you should have at least some knowledge uh, of connecting to few different sources and then process it through channel uh, and into the sync the sync should be hdfs you don't need to explore anything for, uh, other than hdfs for the certification but these are different sources which are supported by flume out of the box you can also provide custom sources also and the one which we have used the is netcat okay after the sources in the configuration you can also check uh, flume things and then flume channels we have used memory channel it has jdbc channel kafka channel file channel etc um, and when it comes to sync you have hdfs sync uh, logger sync which is which, which is the uh, sync we have used as part of our um, uh, first flume job and then it supports euro sync thrift sync etc uh, hbase elastic search all the syncs are supported out of the box using flume that being said um, i will try to cover uh, one or two sources and one or two uh, channels for the certification over time uh, as per uh, on my channel i will cover all the sources and uh, all the uh, channels as well as things uh, things but to begin with for the certification i will only cover one or two sources one or two channels and hdfs as sync uh, already we have seen logger i will cover hdfs as well that being said 
if you like the uh, content on uh, of this video uh, please click on the like button if you want to provide the feedback please use the comment section of the video if you want to um, uh, raise some technical questions please use the stack overflow by tagging them appropriately and if you uh, want to discuss further on certifications please join my linkedin group it varsity hadoop certifications and if you are not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will get to see a lot more content like this over time thank you bye